Waterloo Bridge. It's noted for these amazing views towards the Square Mile and St Paul's and the other way towards Westminster and the Houses of Parliament. But is there more to this bridge than sheer eye candy? But this isn't the original Waterloo Bridge. The first one was built some 200 years ago by John Rennie, whose name you might remember from the London Bridge and Southwark videos because he also built the original versions of those bridges, a very busy guy. His original Waterloo Bridge was completed in 1817 and was originally going to be called Strand Bridge, but they soon renamed it after the famous victory at Waterloo where the forces of Britain and our allies defeated Napoleon. Now that first bridge was built of granite stone. That lasted 100, 120 years before it got replaced. But you can still find some of those granite slabs dotted around town and indeed all over the world. Uh, some of the pieces were sent off to Canberra, others to Wellington and other parts of the Commonwealth. I think these balusters behind me are part of that original granite bridge as well. And you can find more on that interesting story if you click the link to my article in the bottom right hand corner. By the 1920s, that original bridge had kind of reached the end of its natural life. Motor traffic had taken its toll on a structure that was built in the age of the horse and cart. It was time to replace the bridge, but while wrangling went on on how to finance it, they slung across a temporary iron bridge across the Thames there to the east of the structure. That actually lasted 20 years and served itself well. In fact, so well that during the Second World War, it was dismantled, sent over to Belgium to cross the Rhine and help the Allied troops to get across into Germany. Now the bridge we see today, this glorious multi-span Portland stone structure was actually built during the Second World War and mostly by a female workforce because of course many of the men were overseas fighting the war and for that reason it's sometimes referred to as the Ladies Bridge. It was designed by Giles Gilbert Scott whose name might be familiar. He was responsible for quite a few of the iconic buildings along the river including Battersea Power Station, the rebuilt House of Commons and Bankside Power Station now Tate Modern. The bridge partly opened in 1942 to southbound traffic. Right there at the front was a little schoolboy called Leonard Mitchell of Brixton. He'd been waiting for an hour or so to be the first person to get across that bridge, beating all the motor traffic. So well done, Leonard Mitchell of Brixton. One of the things I like most about this bridge though is if you get up close and look at the stonework, you can see ancient life forms fossilised into the Portland stone old bivalve mollusks and different shells here in the bridge. These are millions of years old and it just makes you think about your own existence whenever you cross this bridge. If you've ever been in the proud nightclub underneath the north side of the bridge, you've been inside what used to be a tram tunnel. Until the 1950s when they stopped running, trams would come down Kingsway and debouche onto the embankment through the doors behind me before turning off peeling down the embankment to Westminster Bridge. Like all the bridges over the Thames, Waterloo Bridge has its dark side as well and there have been some really peculiar deaths here over the years. Perhaps the strangest was 1857 when a body was found in a carpet bag on one of the piers supporting the bridge, all chopped up and boiled. Now the body was never identified and no murderer was ever found. Something even more peculiar happened in the 1970s when a guy called Georgi Markov, a Bul Bulgarian dissident, was shot on Waterloo Bridge and later died. Now he wasn't shot with any old gun, he was shot with a converted umbrella that had been turned into a pellet rifle. And uh, he'd actually been shot with a ricin-laced pellet, straight out of James Bond, this murder. And then in 1841, during the Victorian era, there was a daredevil from America called Samuel Gilbert Scott. Now he came here to jump off bridges. He'd successfully jumped off Southwark Bridge into the Thames and he was a big draw, a big famous figure, Houdini-like character. When he tried to jump off Waterloo Bridge, he started messing around with a bit of rope before he plummeted. The rope got caught around his neck and he was swinging there in a noose for a good six or seven minutes before anyone cut him down. They all thought it was part of his act, but it had gone horribly wrong. He died, unfortunately, from his injuries. Incidentally, the famous Banksy stencil of the girl with the balloon, it was right here. It's not there anymore, but it was right here. 
and there used to be a Banksy here as well. So there we go, the wonderful and historic Waterloo Bridge. And I'm just going to leave you with one favourite pub quiz question fact. That in the famous song Waterloo Sunset by the Kinks, there are these two characters called Terry and Julie who cross over the bridge to Waterloo Station. Now they're supposedly named after Terence Stamp and Julie Christie, the famous 1960s actors. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I'm going to walk into my own Waterloo Sunset now. So, till next time, 